Hello everybody and welcome back to Occult Perspectives. So this is a video, um, I didn't think I would end up doing it for a while, but I've been kind of excited about the subject. I've been gathering information, um, I've learned new information which has made it more exciting to do a video on this. Um, and I also plan on doing a YouTube short, um, just like a short one minute video about it. But um, this video is about the pentagram. And I actually own two different pentagram necklaces. I have this one. Hopefully you can see that all right. Um, to me, this one has more of the fire energy just because of the red in this pentagram. Um, it's a slightly newer one compared to this one. This is an older pentagram that I have. Um, this one's been around for quite a while. It has a lot of energy in it now. Um, this one's been with me on a lot of adventures and journeys. So has this one as well, but... Um, this one's been around since the beginning of uh, my magical career and such. All right, um, so let's go ahead and get into it. Um, the first source um, that I wanted to pull from was the secret teachings of all ages. And take into account when I'm reading this information, a lot of it is review that we know about the pentagram. But some of it's more in-depth stuff, and I, you know, as ceremonial magicians or practicing high magic um, we use the pentagram all the time so I figured it would be better to do more extensive uh, research on that and figure out more about it um, so Manly P Hall of course the secret teaching of the secret teachings of all ages is one of the magnum opuses of um, research material um, for anyone who's interested in the occult or the esoteric so I highly recommend it um, here's what Manly P. Hall has to say about the pentagram. The pentagram is the figure of the microcosm, the magical formula of a man. It is the one rising out of the four, the human soul rising from the bondage of the animal nature. It is the true light, the star of the morning, or the morning star. Um, it marks the location of five mysterious centers of force, the awakening of which is the supreme secret of white magic. Interesting. Um, and of course, like the lesser banishing ritual, the pentagram, the lesser banishing ritual, the hexagram, that's considered, you know, white magic because it's working on ourselves. It's transmuting ourselves. We're not so much trying to make a change in the physical world, although working on ourselves um, as we've said before, you know, is a, is a byproduct of that. Your external world is going to change when you work on your internal temple. Um, let's see what else he has to say about the pentagram. There's actually um, kind of a, a big little section here. In symbolism, an inverted figure always signifies a perverted power. The average person does not even suspect the occult properties of emblematic pentacles. On this subject, the great Paracelsus... I think that's how you say it, or per Periclesis, I've heard it said a couple different ways, has written, no doubt many will scoff at the seals, their characters, and their uses, which are described in these books, because it seems incredible to them that metals and characters which are dead should have any power and effect. Yet no one has ever proved that the metals and also the characters as we know them are dead, for the salt, sulfur, and quintessences of metals are the highest preservate, um, I'm sorry, preservatives of human life and are far superior to all other symbols translated from the original german the black magician cannot use the symbols of white magic without bringing down upon himself the forces of white magic which would be fatal to his schemes he must therefore distort the hierograms so that they typify the occult fact that he himself is distorting the principles for which the symbols stand black magic is not a fundamental art it is the misuse of an art Therefore, it has no symbols of its own. It merely takes the emblematic figures of white magic and by inverting and reversing them signifies that it is left-handed, the left-hand path. Um, and Mark Passio, he talks about this in his um, some of his videos when he talks about the pentagram, especially the upside-down pentagram, that the dark occult doesn't necessarily like create their own symbols. It's, it's usually a, a perversion of a symbol that already exists. Um, so the left-hand path, or black magic, just takes these symbols and perverts them um, for a different use, for, you know, when it's not a divine use or whatever. 
Um, personally, I don't think an upside down pentagram is evil. It just represents the opposite side of the force. And we'll get into that later on in this video. Um, I'm going to keep on going along. A good instance of this practice is found in the pentagram or five pointed star. And that's all that pentagram means. Pentagram, five pointed star made of five connected lines. This figure is the time-honored symbol of the magical arts and signifies the five properties of the great magical great magical agent, the five senses of man, the five elements of nature, the five extremities of the human body by means of the pentagram within his own soul. Man not only may master and govern all creatures inferior to himself, but may demand consideration at the hands of those superior to himself. Interesting. So with the pentagram within his own soul, Man may not only master and govern all creatures inferior, but may demand consideration at the hands of those superior to himself. And I feel like you kind of, when you walk down the magical path, you kind of start to get the feeling that, you know, these higher forces are, you know, watching you. And it's, um, you know, you're, you're calling forth the archangels. You're, you're calling these forces into your life. Um, so I think that you can demand consideration from the highest, you know, that's that's part of what we do through ritual. Um, I think it's a balance of modesty and knowing that your true will is going to be accomplished because a lot of magicians say there's no, there's no real, um, you know, a lot of magicians don't believe in like the karmic laws. They don't, they view it more from a scientific perspective, especially left-hand pathers, rather than it being an organic consciousness. Um, it's more of this like, matrix thing that you can just manipulate well you can and you can create matrices within the organic overall creation but at the end of the day um, it's really only going to hurt you if you try to um, you know tamper with things too much I guess is what I was um, trying to get to and through white magic we demand consideration from the higher spheres we try to manifest heaven down here um, so yeah, as a, as a magician, you should know that your, you know, your will is going to come to pass. What you want to manifest, it's already going to be manifested. Um, but also do it with modesty. You know, always come to the divine. Um, when you're in between the worlds during the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram, you've got the higher realms above. You've got earth at your feet. You're still connected, you know, with your, your feet are still connected to the earth plane, but you are standing above it. And then you have Kether and um, the, the Ayn Sof, um, etc. above you. Um, okay, we've looks like there is one more paragraph in the Secret Teachings of All Ages. The pentagram is used extensively in black magic, but when so used, its form always differs in one of three ways. The star may be broken at one point by not permitting the converging lines to touch it. It may be in inverted by having one point down and two up which we'll talk, we've already discussed, or it may be distorted by having the points of, of varying lengths. When used in black magic, the pentagram is called the sign of the cloven hoof or the footprint of the devil. The star with two points upward is also called the goat of Mendes because the inverted star is the same shape as a goat's head. When the upright star turns and the upper point falls to the bottom, it signifies the fall of the morning star. And we know there's a connection with the pentagram and Lucifer. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and X out of this. Let's see what my next reference was in my notes. I'm just going to try to get through all this as quick as I can. I made a note too that I tend to see Manly P. Hall. He's I see Manly P. Hall as more of a like a light mason. Um, He's more of a white brother, you know. Um, some of the guys like Al, um, Albert Pike, even though he's super intelligent, you know, he's a very one of the main figures in masonry. He he's kind of more along the lines of a darker mason, I would say, than Manly. Manly's just the scholarly guy that's brought a lot of information together. He's very benevolent. He's not like a war, he wasn't getting involved in you know wars and conspiracies and stuff like that. Okay, the Golden Dawn. Israel Rigardi. Otherwise known as the Black Brick. Let's see what we have about the pentagram in here. Oh, and also I have this incense burner, um, which is a pentagram as well. Um, so that's pretty cool. I've used that 
um, here and there. I don't burn incense too often um, during my practices. Let's see, page 280. And I'll also be covering, this video is mostly about the pentagram, but I'm also going to be talking about the hexagram a little bit in this video as well, because the two shapes, of course, go hand in hand. During the LVRP, you have the four pentagrams around you, and then you have the hexagram above and below you, you know, keeping you within the Merkabah, the consecrated box. And if you have not watched my um, videos on the Lesser Banishing Ritual of the Pentagram and my Middle Pillar Ritual video, um, I highly recommend that you watch that as well. Okay. Pentagram. The pentagram is a powerful symbol representing the operation of the eternal spirit and the four elements under the divine presidency of the letters of the name Yeshua. The elements themselves in the symbol of the cross are governed by yod heh vav -Hey, but the letter Shin representing the Ruach, Elohim the divine spirit being added thereto, the name becoming Yeshua or Yeho, there's so many different spellings of, of that name really kind of confuses me. From each re-entering angle of the pentagram, therefore, issueth a ray, representing a radiation from the divine. Therefore, it is called the flaming pentagram or star of great light, an affirmation of the forces of divine light to be found therein. And of course, um, the blazing star um, of masonry, um, which is at the center of the lodge, and we'll get into that um, when we jump into Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma. Traced as a symbol of good, it should be placed with the single point upward, representing the rule of the divine spirit. For if thou shouldst write it with the two points upward, it is an evil symbol, affirming the empire of matter over that divine spirit which should govern it. See that thou doest it not. <laughs> Yet, if there may arise an absolute necessity for working or conversing with a spirit of evil nature, and that to retain him before thee without tormenting him, thou hast to employ the symbol of the pentagram reversed. For know thou well, thou can have no right to injure or hurt even evil spirits to gratify curiosity or caprice. In such a case, thou shalt hold the blade of thy magical sword upon the single point of the pentagram until such time as thou shalt license him to depart. Um, take notice too that this particular um, line right here, this is about some advanced stuff. This is more like getting into, we talked about the Goetia and the Solomonic, um, working with the um, 72 demons of the Goetia, all that stuff, very advanced stuff. I just wanted to see um, what they had written about some of the stuff about the pentagram in here that was interesting. But you hold the blade of the magical sword upon the single lowest point of the pentagram until such time as thou shalt license him to depart. Also revile not evil spirits, but remember that, remember that the archangel Michael, of whom St. Jude speaketh when contending with Satan, durst not bring a railing accusation against him, but said the Lord rebuke, rebuke thee. Um, and there's also um, the pentagram has the elements, but there's also an animal associated with each one. Um, I don't know if you can see that picture right there. With the pentagram, it's spirit at the top. I'm pretty sure this is water, fire, air, and then earth. I could be wrong. No, it looks like earth is this one and then air but i think fire is this one down here and then water is over here yep and then spirit is at the top and and we've talked about in videos before if you're invoking an element um, when you're drawing the pentagram uh, let's say water water is on the right hand side of the pentagram if you're invoking water you're going to pull the line towards to the right um, if you're banishing water, you're going to pull the line to the left because the water is on the right. The water element is the right point of the pentagram. So if you're banishing, you're pulling it away from that um, as you when you draw your pentagram. If you draw the pentagram, um, there's colors corresponding to the elements. 
black background. There should be the sign of the pentagram, the wheel, the lion, the eagle, the ox, and the man. And um, I've talked in videos before about what each of these correspondences are. You should probably know them by now. Um, they go with the zodiac too. Um, the eagle or the phoenix is associated with Archangel Gabriel in the west. The ox or the bull is associated with Oriole in the north. The lion is associated with um, Archangel Michael in the south. Uh, the wheel goes at the top of the pentagram. And the man, the man of Aquarius, um, which is the east associated with Ra um, Raphael. And each hath an angel assigned unto it for dominion. Yep, yeah, which I just said. Hence ariseth the supreme ritual of the pentagram. Um, and that is kind of, that's an advanced topic we're not going to get into into this video. Um, I hope I don't have to split this video into two, but I may actually have to end up doing that. So this video may end up being uh, the pentagram part one video because we're already, we are already at like 20 minutes and um, I've just now kind of started to get into the pentagram actually. Let's see if there's anything here, um, beginner information about the pentagram or what the pentagram actually is because it's starting to talk about the supreme ritual of the pentagram. Um, which we're not going to get into all that stuff yet. Okay. So that's good for that. And then on page 287, he talks about the hexagram just a little bit. Let's see. The hexagram, um, and if you don't know what that is, here's some hexagrams here. The Star of David. It's the the fire triangle and the water triangle combine, you know, the divine masculine and the feminine um, merging. The hexagram is a powerful symbol representing the operation of the seven planets under the presidency of the Sephiroth and the letters of the seven lettered name Ararita, which you, you use that during the lesser vanishing ritual of the hexagram. The hexagram is sometimes called the signet or symbol of the macrocosm, just as the pentagram is called the signet star or symbol of the microcosm. We've talked about that before. The pentagram deals with the material plane um, or the microcosm, you know, earth, and then um, the hexagrams, you know, you're invoking like planetary energies, this macrocosm. Ararita is a divine name of seven letters formed from the Hebrew initials of the sentence. It's a notericon. We've talked about that before. One is his beginning, one is his individuality, his per per permutation is one. As in the case of the pentagram, each re-entering angle of the hexagram issueth a ray representing a radiation from the divine. Therefore, it is called the flaming hexagram or the six-rayed signet star. Usually, it is traced with the single point uppermost. It is not an evil symbol with the two points upward, and this is a point of difference from the pentagram. And I think that's probably all I need to read for now because some of this is, yeah, some of this is more. It gets into more. Yep, that's more advanced information. So we are just talking about what the pentagram is in this video. Let's continue here. Um, I'm going to jump into morals and dogma and see what Albert Pike has to say about the pentagram. Okay, I did leave a little paper marker in here. And I think I still lost my page. Because I did not have a real bookmarker in there. So I'm gonna have to go back to the index and see which page I was trying to save. Pentagram. Here we go. 
The star which guided them is the same blazing star, the image whereof we find in all initiations. To the alchemists, it is the sign of the qu quintessence. To the magi, the grand arcanum. To the Kabbalists, the sacred pentagram. The study of this pentagram could not but lead the magi to the knowledge of the new name, which was about to raise itself above all names and cause all creatures capable of adoration to bend the knee. I think that's all that is on this page. And, you know, the blazing star, it's, it's referred to as different things in here. Um, the, the blazing star, to me, would be synonymous with the pentagram. Um, and the blazing star represents, of course, divine providence. Um, it represents a bunch of other things. Um, let me see here in the index. Before moving forward, I just wanted to... I just saw some stuff where it talks about Dante and uh, Albert Pike's Morals and Dogma. Back in the index, there was some stuff about Dante. Blazing Star, a symbol. it's a symbol of Sirius. It's an emblem of prudence, omniscience, the all-seeing eye, an emblem of the sun to our ancient English brethren. Announces the birth of the sun, an emblem of divine truth. Blazing Star of Truth, formed by faith above resting on revelation. An image found in every initiation. It's the Horus, or the offspring of the sun and moon. The sign of the grand arcanum to the magi. The, the quintessence to the alchemists. Um, the sacred, the sign of the sacred pentagram to the Kabbalists. The blazing star is the sign of the sacred pentagram. Okay. And then I had one other note in this book. And then we'll move on. about the blazing star, the pentagram. To find in the blazing star of five points an allusion to the divine providence is also fanciful. And to make it commemorative of the star that is said to have guided the Magi to give it a meaning comparatively modern originally. Um, so he's saying that to say that the pentagram or the blazing star is that which guided the magi is giving it still a comparatively modern um, definition. Originally it represented Sirius or the dog star and the forerunner of the inundation of the Nile, the god Anubis, companion of Isis in her search for the body of Osiris, her brother and husband. Then it became the image of Horus, the son of Osiris himself, symbolized also by the sun, the author of the seasons and the god of time, son of Isis, who was the universal nature. Um, what else does it say? Himself, the primitive matter, inexhaustible source of life, spark of uncreated fire, universal seed of all beings. It was Hermes, also the master of learning, whose name in Greek is that of the god of Mercury, of course. Thoth, Hermes, Mercury. It became the sacred and potent sign or character of the Magi, the Pentalpha, and is the significant emblem of liberty and freedom because we see that on the American flag as well, the stars, the, they're basically pentagrams. Um, blazing with a steady radiance amid the weltering elements of good and evil and of revolutions and promising serene skies and fertile seasons to the nations after the storms of change and tumult. And also, um, there's something else here. The sun represents the actual light he pours upon the moon, his rays both shed their light upon their offspring, the blazing star or Horus, and the three form the great equilateral triangle in the center of which is the omnific letter of the Kabbalah by which creation is said to have been effected. So this blazing star in the middle represents this word, the logos, you know, of course, but it also represents the Horus, um, the sun. Um, and I've talked about that in Albert Pike. Um, morals and dogma videos so if you have not watched any of those videos um, I do a video series on this as well oh, it's, it looks kind of dark in this room um, from the video but it's really maybe my camera could use a good wipe or something but it's really really not that dark in here uh, hopefully that light's not blinding you guys alright let's see what else I got how much more I can get through here Okay, 
Um, this is another book I'm going to reference for the pentagram. Kabbalah for the modern world. Page 93. Talks about the hexagram. The interplay, let's see, the qualities of expansion, concentration, locomotion, or movement, and cohesion, or union, are all external manifestations of the world of action, Malkut. They can be seen not just in physical phenomena, but also in human relations and in international affairs. The interplay of the forces of expansion and contraction, or magnetism and electricity, fire and water, um, can be seen in the two triangles that form the Star of David. The upward pointing triangle symbolizes fire, while the downward pointing triangle represents water, as we've said before. Tradition teaches that King David was a master Kabbalist, and this symbol is strongly indicative that he indeed was. For by means of the proper interaction of strength, fire, and restraint, water, um, severity, and mercy, could be symbolized in the, by the pillars of the Tree of Life, too. Um, he was able to unify Israel after generations of strife and disillusion. Oh my gosh. I feel like that light is just being a pain in the butt. I can't really... Yeah, I just hope it's not too bothersome in this video. Let's see here. Is there anything else? And this is kind of cool. I'll go ahead and read this. For by means of the proper interaction of strength, fire, and restraint, water, strength, and mercy, so visually expressed in the Star of David, he was able to unify Israel after genera generations of strife and dissolution. So it's this emblematical, you're pulling the forces together, you know, the fire and the water, the upward, the downward pointing triangle. In Malkut, then, the material kingdom, we see the materialization of the intangible and abstract concepts that originate in the higher spheres, so they work their way down. It is in this last Sephira, also known as the kingdom, that the bearded king of Kether reigns in all his glory. It was to this kingdom, Malkuth, that Jesus referred in the last part of the Lord's Prayer. For thine is the kingdom, you know, Ata, Malkuth, and the power, and the glory, Netzach and Hod, forever. Um, which we talked about, Netzach and Hod are the lower left and right parts of the pillars. So on the human body, it would be correlated with like your hip area right before you go down to Yassad. It is obviously that only a consummate Kabbalist could have composed this prayer. Okay. So that's enough on the hexagram. And then the pentagram is on page 101. The two trees, Sephirotic and Klepothic, um, so now we're getting into the Klopothic tree of life here um, because it talks about it a little bit. And if you don't know what that is, it's the reverse tree of life. So you have the normal tree of life above, but then the Klopothic is like the darker reflection or it's the, it's the reverse, essentially, tree of life. It's the opposite, the, the negative, the antithesis. It's the dark side of the force. It's the other polarity, the opposite tree. And the two trees, the Sephirotic and Klopothic, are often represented as if the Infernal spheres, which are on the reverse side of the divine ones, like the opposite sides of a coin, there you go, were a reflection of the tree of life from a mirror placed at its base. In this concept, the Klopoth seemed to extend downward from the sphere of Malkut, where they ab abut, A-B-U-T. Huh. Malkut, according to tradition, is a fallen sephira, for it was separated from the rest of the tree by Adam's fall. That's interesting lore. Thus, the material world rests upon the top of the infernal world of shells. That is the reason why their influence is felt so strongly in human affairs. The demons of the Klopoth are the most unbalanced and chaotic of all principles. The first two spheres of the Klopothic tree, corresponding inversely to Kether and Hokmah, are void and disorganized. It's chaos. While the third sphere is known as the abode of darkness, the reigning prince of the Klopoth is Samael. Let's see if there's actually anything here 
yet about um, the pentagram, because that's what this video is about. There we go. The pentagram, or five-pointed star, is one of the symbols used to indi indicate the harmonious Sephiroth or chaotic clopothic forces of the cosmos. The five points of the pentagram symbolize the four elements of the ancients, plus a fifth element, which is known as Akasha, or Ether. This fifth element is not to be confused with the material concept of ether. It is a very tenuous substance, which is found only in the abstract worlds. Just as the four elements are assigned to the four worlds of the Kabbalists, this fifth element is ascribed to the archetypal world of Adam Kadmon. When the pentagram is used to symbolize the harmonizing forces of the elements in the Tree of Life, the glyph is represented with one point uppermost and two points extending on either side, like a man standing with open arms, absorbing to his soul the bounties of the divine light. The two lower points represented the figure spread legs. The tetragrammaton, or yodhe vauhe is also hidden in the pentagram as follows. Interesting. Okay, so the upper point of the yod corresponds to the upper point of the pentagram, or the world of Adam Kadmon. The body of the yod corresponds to the right point of the star in the world of emanation. The letter he corresponds to the right hand leg of the pentagram into the world of creation the letter vow corresponds to the left hand leg into the world of formation while the last letter a corresponds to the left point of the pentagram into the world of action so that's pretty cool that's more information i didn't know about um yod he vow he actually has indications on the actual pentagram itself when the position of the pentagram is reversed the two lower points which form the legs of the glyph are placed uppermost the pentagram then resembles the head of a goat where the two points form the horns. The points protruding on the sides are the ears and the lower point forms a beard. This is a common symbol among Satanists by means of which they contact the adverse clipothic, um, the infernal habitations of the demonic hordes. From the preceding discussions, blah, 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 blah. I think that's all there is about, yeah, about the pentagram in this book, really, that I could find. Um, and then I also have another book I'm going to reference real quick. And then I might be able to just talk and get through some of this other stuff. I don't know if I'll end up making two videos or not. I don't think so. I'm going to try to finish it all, perhaps. Never really know how these things go. So, Okay, the witch book. Page 366. And that, this is what this book looks like if you haven't ever seen that before. Alright. The pentagram, as you said before, is a five pointed star. Single point upward, known as the Seal of Solomon. It's also called the Pentalpha, Star of Logris, Goblin's Foot. Interesting. Witch's Cross and Druid's Foot. As a magical figure, its origins are lost in time. The pentagram doesn't represent anything evil. It's, it's a very, very ancient symbol. Um, it goes back to cultures way before probably anything that we even know about, really. As a magical figure, its origins are lost in time. Eliphas Levi describes the pentagram as signifying the domination of the mind over the elements. It is generally associated with the life force, much like the ancient Egyptian Ankh, and was often associated with a microcosmic man, a figure of a man with arms and legs extended, superimposed on a five-pointed star. For medieval alchemists, magicians, and philosophers, the pentagram symbolized man as the microcosm. Um, as Barbara Walker says, man is the world, the world is man, and his genitals are the center of the universe. Interesting. It was considered an illustration of the principle as above, so below. The pentagram has always been associated with magic. The five points represent the four elements surmounted by spirit. Um, from, from a tale of Sir Gawain in the Green Knight, the pentacle was sacred to Morgan, the Celtic death goddess, and in the tale was carried on a blood red shield in her honor. Um, as we know, the Golden Dawn's lesser ritual of the pentagram includes a self consecration. By drawing the pentagram on the body, touching with the tip of a ritual knife, a similar consecration done either on oneself or on another is found in some traditions of witchcraft, where the four fingers dipped into oil or salted water and then touched to the forehead. Right breast, left shoulder, right shoulder, right breast, back to the forehead. In some degree, systems, Gardnerian, because this is uh, this is like a more of a Wiccan book, um, and I'm still learning a lot about, uh, still learning about Wiccan, um, you know, and a, a lot of the other branches of 
paganism, witchcraft. I'm more ceremonial magic, you know, golden dawn type stuff, masonry. That's that's my background. That's my my forte, you know, so to speak. Um, but it's saying in some degree systems, the Gardnerian, a variation of this ritual is part of the consecration for the first degree. An inverted pentagram with the two points upward is for the second degree. And a pentagram surmounted by a tri triangle is for the third degree. Interesting. An inverted pentagram is not necessarily a sign of evil. How and by whom it is used may suggest good or evil. Reportedly, Satanists use an inverted pentagram, often portrayed super superimposed on the head of a goat. In that sense, it is a negative symbol, whereas an inverted pentagram used in Wicca is a positive symbol. In modern day witchcraft, a pentagram is described in the air using an athame to seal a consecrated circle. It may also be drawn with single point uppermost to invoke and with two points upwards to banish. Okay, that's a little bit different than what we learn in um, ceremonial magic. So here it's saying a single, a pentagram with a single point up is to invoke and with t um, the two points up word is to banish. But as we know in the LBRP, we draw a right side up pentagram. So I know like the Wiccans, um, Wiccanism, witchcraft, they do things a little bit differently. Um, and I like to learn from everybody definitely don't want to bash anybody's tradition um, i'm here to learn i'm here to share knowledge so let's go over some some notes here real quick and then i'll try to wrap this up um damien eccles video on he has a video on the pentagram um, i highly recommend watching that one too um if you want to learn more about the pentagram um but here's some quick things that he has to say in it it's one of the first symbols of divinity you see it in all the ancient cultures it's one of our you know, first conceptions of divinity, one of the first symbols that repre represents it. Um, and, and of course, the elements, um, the directions of, of the points of the pentagrams correspond to elements, and those elements correspond to parts within ourselves. Um, all the elements exist within the human body. Um, so the air is intellect, the cups are equate to water and emotions. Um, of course, uh, Earth is the physical, you know, and that's pentacles. Um, fire is the will, and this is um, wands in the tarot. And then the air is, I forgot to mention, is swords in the tarot suits. Um, yeah, the order of the pentagram, as I showed you before, if you start at the top of the pentagram and you go around in a clockwise direction, um, moving right, starts with spirit at the top, and then it moves to water, fire, earth, and then air. When you draw the pentagrams, you are pulling the energy down, pulling divinity down to make these shapes, pulling energy from heaven, the stars, um, and also angels are called stars, or angel means star too, so think about that as well. Also, every man and woman is a star. So you're pulling down this energy from the heavens and into every aspect of your being, Damien says, when you're, you know, especially when you're doing like a, an invoking pentagram, you're pulling the energy down. When you're banishing, you know, you're pushing it back up. But um, for invoking, you're pulling it. But anytime you're making a pentagram, you know, you're, you're pulling the energy from, from heaven, from source. And into every aspect of your being, emotions, physical body, into your life force, etc. All human knowledge came from the stars. Um, even like the Pythagorean mathematics and stuff like that. Um, I mean, you're drawing a star. That's what a pentagram is. So it's, of course, it's star energy. Um, angels are stars it all starts to make sense our first conceptions of god came from the stars by bringing the spirit down you are essentially purifying yourself pentagram just means five pointed star um and then i'm going to go over some stuff that new life tools i highly recommend his uh his youtube channel um it's spelled n-u life l-y-f-e tools um and i'll go ahead and use this pentagram to um go ahead and 
So you got spirit here and I'm moving to the right. I don't know if that's really what it looks like from where you are, but I'm going to the right as I'm going around the pentagram. You got spirit. I think it's water, fire, earth is down here and then air is right here. And then of course spirit. And this particular pentagram has a circle around it. So it's the Ouroboros, you know, the serpent eating its own tail, um, infinity. So, okay. New life tools. Let's see. Let's see what Brother Yusef has to say. Um, so upside down pentagrams, um, if you you know, are actually more magnetic. Um, upright pentagrams are electrical in nature. So, and of course, we know that you know magnetism is like pulling things inwards. It's the the magnetic force. So. So this, this upside down symbol, pentagram, this represents, it's more magnetic versus this, this is more electric. Um, and Brother Yusef, he would use, he, it's funny, um, he explains one of his, he talks about one of his old upside down pentagrams that he used to wear all the time and how it would scare people and stuff. Pretty funny stories he has not and that but a lot of the times if i don't like because i don't want people to just like who don't understand these things um you know the occult esoteric whatever i'll um i'll hide my necklace actually under my shirt when i'm in public because i just i don't want people to carry that energy with them throughout the rest of the day i don't want them interrupting with what i'm trying to manifest you know um so sometimes i wear it as a as a badge of glory and then other times i try to keep it um secret and safe from the profane so it really just it depends on what kind of mood you're in, I guess. At least that's how it is for me. Um, but Brother Yusuf, he had a big, he has this big old upside down pentagram um, in his video. And he's got multiple pentagrams, but this one is pretty big. It's like a, on a big circle and he's got like some hematite and some other stones on it to make it even more magnetic. So that thing's pretty, it's pretty intense. Um, and he would use it to absorb energy, to absorb the chaos, basically the dark energy, the chaos. Um, which is where all existence really even comes from. I'm starting to read Madame Blavatsky's The Secret Doctrine, and I really want to get into that. Um, probably, that might actually be like the next full video will be on The Secret Doctrine, because I want to do a YouTube short on the pentagram, just so I can, um, people can have something shorter to watch, you know, they don't have to watch like a full video if they don't want to. Sometimes these things get pretty long. Um, so Brother Yusuf, he would use this upside down pentagram, to absorb energy, to absorb chaos, in order to transmute it, because um, the center is where the energy gets absorbed, which we'll get into in a second. Uh, the way your organs are arranged in your body actually forms an upside-down pentagram, um, from what I understand, so that's pretty interesting. Um, Brother Yusef talks about how using different geometry, um, this was just a side note, like if you, if you go outside and you form a circle of dirt, uh, with a cross in the middle, the energies and the elements are being balanced out. So what happened there was um, they they did that like outside. They created um, someone did this. It's it's been proven multiple times though that if you consecrate the space, you've got the circle with the cross in the middle, and then you bless the space or whatever. The plants and the life will grow there more because the space has been vibrationally cleansed out. The energies and the elements are being balanced out in that space. And the same um, goes for you when you're wearing a pentagram. Like it balances out um, all the elements in your body and stuff. It acts as like a extra extra protection, an extra shield, um, which I'll get into here in a second. Okay. The pentagram has a centripetal force. So the upright pentagram, centripetal. The symbol itself is feminine, so the pentagram itself is actually a feminine symbol. Um, but the center pedal means that it has a force that pulls to the center, so it's always like a vacuum. It's like it's sucking in the energies um, of things as you're wearing it. Centripetal it means it has a force that pulls to the center. It is always absorbing as it pulls to the center. I'm sorry, that was low battery mode. It was warning me that my phone's about to die. Um, it is always absorbing as it pulls to the center of the pentagram through the centripetal force. As it's doing this, the spin is balancing out the energies. Um, so it's 
it's like a vortex. It's the spinny energy that's sucking it in. Um, take this, this into account, this vortex, this spirally type um, energy. Um, when you think of the formation of the cosmos, you know, you have this correlation, this as above, so below kind of correspondence going on. Um, how the spherical or whirlwind shape manifests itself on different planes of existence. Um, the pentagram also represents Venus, um, associated with gr the color green um, and love. Um, it also um, represents Lucifer to some degree, um, you know, the morning star. Um, and of course, Lucifer is not really what we think he is. Um, that'll, that's going to take a whole other video. That's a whole other um, topic of discussion. Um, definitely want to do someday. So the shape of the pentagram um, is feminine by nature. But when it's upright, um, it's more electric or masculine um, with its energy. Um, rather than when it's upside down. So when it's inverted or upside down, um, it's actually more feminine of a symbol um, than it is when it's upright, but it's still it's still feminine even when it's upright. Um, but yeah, the energy when it's upright, the force is centripetal. Wearing a pentagram will charge your aura It's electrical. Um, it will pull energy, as we said before. Um, it pulls it through this vortex into your own aura, this life force energy. And as it's pulling in the energy, it expands your energy as it's pulling it in. It balances out the five elements inside of you. Um, and take all of this into account, you know, when you think about the lesser banishing ritual of the pentagram and when you're pointing your athame into the center of the pentagram, think about all of this information, you know, that I learned from Brother Yusuf and other channels. Um, you know, when you're doing these rituals, you know, there's a gateway or a portal that's kind of being open. Um, and I'm about to explain that here in, in just a minute. Um, this was an interesting side note too. Lower beings, um, demonic or otherwise, have to manifest through an element to get to you. If you are unbalanced on one of these forces um, or an element, the pentagram can suck this energy in and send it back to where it came from. So when you wear a pentagram, um, it's actually giving you protection, and it's um, it balances out the elements. That way you're not super um, unbalanced in one aspect. You know, the water equates to the emotions. Maybe if you're overly emotional, it means your water element's unbalanced. Um, if you're losing your intellect, if you're not, you know, working on your mind and getting smarter, you know, you need, you're lacking in your air qualities. So these lower beings, they have to manifest through these elements into the material world. Um, so they're gonna they're gonna attack you at your weakest, you know, whatever element that is for you. Um, so the pentagram helps suck in this energy and um, send it sends it back to where it came from. The hexagram or the star of David has a masculine energy. It's a centrifugal force instead of a centripetal force. So instead of pulling the energy in, um, it pushes rather than pulls. Um, just like the masculine is the active principle, the outward going. Uh, the female is magnetic. Um, the hexagram can be used to project things into the fourth dimension, and that's kind of what you're doing with the Lesser Banishing Ritual. The hexagram, you're working with planetary energies rather than just Earth energies. The pentagram represents the womb of the mind. The outside of the pentagram, as we said before, is more feminine. The whole symbol is really feminine, but the outside represents more feminine energy, and as you get more towards the center, um, it actually represents more masculine energy, which is kind of ironic because it's pulling in, you know, you would think. But as you get to the center, it's more masculine, it's more electric, and then it pushes out this electric energy. Um, the symbol of a pentagram is electric, even if it's just drawn on a piece of paper due to its geometry, it's in the intrinsic nature of its geometry. Learn to understand these universal laws. They say that geometry and Freemasonry, Freemasonry were originally synonymous terms. You know, Freemasonry truly is all about understanding geometry. If you understand geometry, you truly understand how the, the grand architect of the universe, you know, has come to create um, this world. Some really cool stuff. Um, the center of the pentagram also represents the doorway. Um, it's the center of the cyclone. Um, it's the energy that's being 
or the energy that's being created, the centripetal force. The pentagram is actually what's happening when the force is being pulled into it, is being pulled um, inside out. So the pentagram is being turned upside down um, as the energy is being sucked in. So really what an upside down pentagram is, is it's, it's like, a, it's what's on the inside of the center of an upright pentagram. Isn't that interesting? <laughs> How these dualities work. So to make, for this to even be an upright pentagram within this center exists this. Um, so that's what's really interesting. Think of this energy being sucked in and inverted. And that's really what's in the center. So that's kind of interesting. So an upside down pentagram is actually turned inside out. It's an, in, it's an inside out pentagram. It's an inside out upright pentagram is what a downward pointing pentagram is. And it just represents the opposite side of the force. Um, chaos, primordial energy. Um, we were talking about the center of the pentagram. Um, yeah, it actually represents what is on the inside or the center of the upright pentagram. The center of the pentagram represents the doorway. So this is the doorway right here in the middle. The center of the cyclone or the energy that's being created, the centripetal force, the pentagram is being turned upside down, as we just said. And it's the sun of God um, radiating from the center as well, um, which we talked about earlier in the Albert and Pike book. Um, that makes sense with Horus, you know, being the sun and being represented by the blazing star in the center. It all starts to make a whole bunch of sense now, doesn't it? Um, he, um, Brother Yusuf also had some interesting things to say about on the show Stranger Things, this is why this whole inverted pentagram thing we were just talking about, how it's really an, um, the inverted, the upside down pentagram is the normal pentagram turned inside out. So in Stranger Things, if you've ever watched Stranger Things, which I'm sure many of you have, the show on Netflix, it's probably the best Netflix original show. Um, one of the best that are out there. Notice that they call kind of the demonic world, they don't call it a hell, they don't call it a shadow world, they call it the upside down. You know, it's the upside down world. It's a more primordial chaotic, has more of that energy. Um, the character El corresponds to Elohim. It also um, represents the number 11. And there's 11 Sephiroth in total if you include Da'at, which is if you correspond it on the human body, it would be right at the throat. And the da is the doorway. So, you know, there's more, yeah, more symbolism there. So the center of the pentagram represents the gateway to the primordial force. Um, which the ultimate primordial force is chaos. Women have a more magnetic force, whereas a man is more outgoing. The masculine is the outgoing force, the penetrative force. Um... His brother Yusef says, a woman pulls a man, a man doesn't pull a woman. Cause she's the magnetism, the magnetic one. Um, she puts up with his bullcrap, you know. The hexagram is more of a masculine symbol, represents the penis. The Venus transit, um, this is super interesting. The way that it moves in the sky is actually a pentagram. Uh, if you Google Venus transit pentagram, it should come up. I don't think I've done this yet, but... Um, Brother Yusef said that was true. Right side up or upside down. Um, it's, it's a right side up or an upside down pentagram depending on what part of the universe you are viewing it from. That's really interesting too. Um, things cannot be created without chaos. So an upside down pentagram could actually be more powerful for certain things. Magnetic energy is more powerful than electric energy. So electric energy is the weakest um, and chaos is magnetic and magnetic energy is stronger. But... The synthesis of these two energies creates an energy that is even stronger or more potent. Org, or orgone energy, it's the highest form of energy, but you need both um, the magnetic and the electric um, energies to make this force. It's a fusion of the two. Um, perhaps this alludes to a correspondence to, um, to the beginning of creation on the higher planes. Um, yeah, it would, you know, it makes sense. Because um, the, the chaos is the original primordial darkness. It talks about this in Madame Blavatsky's The Secret Teachings of All Ages. Before anything, there was chaos. It was, it was the darkness. It was actually more of a female energy than anything else. 
Um, and of course, the org or the orgone energy, we see that in words like organism, orgasm, organic, um, because it, it alludes to high levels of life force, organite. Um, I have a couple organite pyramids um, here in my room, actually. Um, and then he talks a little bit about the Baphomet. The Baphomet is actually the symbol of the completed man. It's a synthesis, synthesis of male and female. In a way, the Baphomet represents both pentagrams. So you've got um, the upright one and the downward pointing one. A right side up pentagram on his forehead, telling you where he came from and how to access him. You know, um, He came through the doorway from the primordial mother. The electric force of the upright pentagram and the darkness of the mother. Electricity, darkness, primordial darkness, chaos. Upward pentagram also represents Christ energy, of course, and the Baphomet actually has the, um, the upright pentagram, I think, in his forehead, so that represents that he's actually Christ man, too. Um, he's, um, he's overcome his lower nature. He utilizes the darker nature, but he's overcome it. He's in control of it. So in a way, it does represent the completed man, which in, I guess in a way, Adam Kadmon is a symbol of that as well. Um, and if you want to learn even more cool, interesting stuff about the pentagram, look up um, Sacred Geometry. There's a Donald Duck video, um, an old Disney video where they talk about sacred geometry and they get into some really cool stuff about the pentagram. Like the two shorter lines of the pentagram um, exactly... It equals exactly the third line and there's lots of more fun facts there's lots of shapes that can be formed like from the pentagram so it's like one of the original shapes you know that would gave rise to many other shapes all right everybody um i think that definitely uh definitely covers the pentagram in full um pretty much all the information that i have i've wanted to know more about the pentagram since I started, you know, doing ceremonial magic. Um, it's been one of the things because we use it so much. I wanted to know what the heck is this thing. So now I feel like I have a much better understanding after taking notes, watching different videos, reading different books of knowing really what the pentagram is while I'm using it. And of course, if we meditate and study, you know, if we just study symbols and meditate upon them and, um, you know, we can, if we draw, if we actually start drawing sacred geometry, start drawing these shapes, um, we come to learn them, um, about them even more. So, all right, everybody, I hope you all well. Peace and blessings. Hopefully I can get another video up real soon, and I'm hoping to cover, um, the secret doctrine. So, take care, everybody.